Hello, just a quick update, and I was going to make this yesterday because it had the stats and everything related to reasons why there should not be a lockdown. But as of now, Boris Johnson will be out there on telly uh, telling everybody that we'll be in lockdown, national lockdown, as of Monday. And I can pretty much guarantee that without even looking. It's pretty much foretold. Uh, I would be very surprised if it's not going to happen. However, this video is about the reasons why it shouldn't happen. So the Chuckle Brothers are back at it again. They're uh, calling for a national lockdown by Christmas. Uh, so Patrick Vallance pushing the Prime Minister according to various reports. Uh, Sage has said that they believe all of England will have to be in Tier 3 by the middle of December. Uh, and uh, they're saying that uh, any that the daily deaths are going to hit 500 within weeks uh, with the UK. Uh, well, they're talk now talking about a lampshade wave, Brian. Well, not a second wave, not a first wave, not a third wave, a lampshade wave. This is it gets better. So uh, MPs also putting pressure for actually how to get out of lockdown, not for increasing. So uh, Boris Johnson stuck between these two. Uh, Chuckle Brothers and the MPs from the local area. So uh, let's have a look at the Chuckle Brothers pro projection here. Um, so there are the deaths um, so far this year, a bit compressed, uh, but this uh, line that we're putting on screen at the moment is showing where we are uh, presently. Uh, obviously that first peak, uh, as we've reported before, lockdown deaths, uh, and this is the, uh, the lampshade wave that they're talking about. So everything underneath the red line uh, is a new batch of lockdown deaths that they're preparing for at the moment. Uh, and we'll explain why we say that in a second. Now, just to put this in a little bit of uh, perspective, um, we'll show this graph again, brought up to date, the excess mortality graph. Uh, this is uh, all-cause mortality from the beginning of the year. Uh, the red line is uh, the um, this year's results. Uh, the orange line is the five-year average. Uh, and as you can see, uh, lockdown began there, the first lockdown, uh, and we ended up with a bunch of lockdown deaths. Um, but as we mentioned in the last couple of programs, uh, what we're seeing since then is normal mortality, no pandemic. Uh, but is that the case? Well, if we look uh, at today's, this week's results, we see a little uptick uh, of for this year, for this past week. Uh, the, the, this is for week 42, um, as opposed to the uh, the five-year average. So what is going on here? What are we actually seeing? Um, well, it comes back to the place of death uh, statistics again. And we made the point uh, last week that if you look at the people that are dying in hospitals, it's well below the five-year average in care homes, below the five-year average. Uh, but in homes, in private homes, it's well above the five-year average. And that's where the excess mortality is coming. Uh, and therefore, that's people dying in their homes they're not going to hospital, they're not getting the support they need. Now that's for week 41, uh, but the most recent statistics for week 42. So have they changed at all? Well, let's have a look. Here we go. And what we start starting to see now is excess mortality appearing in care homes once again, as well as in private homes, excess mortality uh, above, uh, you know, it's extended further. So still in hospital uh, below the five-year average at, in private homes, well above the five-year average. Care homes were starting to see it coming above the five-year average and in other locations, uh, it's on uh, or around the average. So that's the situation. And this is what's being used to justify calls for further lockdown and claims of uh, whatever they're calling it. Uh, what was it they were calling it? A lampshade wave. Um, but uh, let's have a look at this. Um, this is uh, Leeds teaching hospitals because they're saying, uh, well, they're saying this. Uh, they're saying today we have three, 263 patients on our beds who've tested positive for COVID-19, including 22 in intensive care. This means we have more COVID-19 patients in our hospitals now than at the peak of the pandemic in mid-April. So that's what they're cl cl uh, claiming. Now, just to put this into perspective, uh, the uh, Leeds teaching hospitals have 2,500 inpatient beds uh, and 23 ICU beds. Um, so their ICU is pretty full. 
uh, but the, the number of people within the hospital with COVID-19 uh, is, what, about 10% of the number of inpatient beds at the moment. And I want to clarify that, of course, what they're saying is people that have tested positive, that doesn't mean that they have COVID-19 COVID as, a, as, a, yeah. as an actual disease. Um, so uh, they go on to say this. Uh, on Tuesday last week, there were 148 patients who tested positive for COVID, which demonstrates how quickly the virus is spreading. Uh, not only is the number of COVID cases increasing, but also uh, so is the rate of increase. We're standing down some planned operations due to current pressures, which means that some patients will have their treatment postponed. Uh, only essential operations are going ahead in most cases. So already we're starting to see the health service shut down as we did in April. Um, and uh, well, that of course is going to create excess mortality, but this will not be excess mortality from COVID-19. It will be excess mortality from the withdrawal of normal health services from the population. Um, and so uh, what's the BBC saying about this? Uh, COVID, how busy are hospitals uh, as the second wave rolls in? And the BBC says this, but hospitals are probably far from full. Uh, what we can't say, because up-to-date figures are not being published by NHS bosses, is exactly how full hospitals actually are. In recent years, hospitals have had about 90% of beds occupied at any one time. Uh, and so this is a really important point, Brian, uh, because, of course, it's really hard to get to the bottom of the statistics because the statistics, some statistics are published, other statistics aren't published. From year to year, the publication of statistics, the, the, the rules under which they've been published has changed. So it's very hard to compare apples with apples. It's practically impossible, in fact. Uh, and that admission from the BBC is absolutely key uh, because, of course, we can't find out exactly what the load is on hospitals, right. except from through a press release or two from a, from a PR uh, department. Right. So even the BBC that initially was pumping out the government lies and spin over the COVID data is now getting caught up in the lies and spin because even it doesn't know what's going on. So it can't even put out a line. Oh, well, I, I think... well, well, look, the line they were putting out in that article in general was very much that the hospitals are under stress and we've got to all be very fearful and so on. Uh, but, but... but the sub headline there is but hospitals are probably far from full. Yes. So we've got we've got cognitive dissonance appearing in the BBC. This is a psychological attack on the nation to confuse. I think they reckon that we're going to need all of next year or they will need all of next year to completely scramble the minds of the public so that we don't know whether we're coming and going. Um, what are they doing while this is going on? They are killing principally elderly people in their tens of thousands. This, this is a government that is now involved in genocide, in my opinion. Well, let's just have a look at how far the propaganda has gone. Uh, because here is, of course, well, many people will have seen the advertisements that are on uh, the TV about, uh, you know, getting your flu jab. But this is a typical graphic from the NHS. The flu kills. The flu kills thousands every year. The flu vaccine is the best protection for you and those around you. Just get your free flu jab. Ask your pharmacist or GP if you're eligible. Uh, flu helps. Flu vaccine helps us help you, apparently. Uh, but the flu kills. This is the important thing. But does it? Because not according to the Office for National Statistics, uh, there were more deaths due to COVID-19 between January and August 2020 than influenza or pneumonia, they said uh, in their most recent release on deaths. Number of deaths due to influenza, pneumonia or COVID-19 by sex, England and Wales, occurring between 1st of January, 31st of August 2020 and registered by 5th of September 2020. Now, of course, this doesn't include uh, the, uh, the autumn of 2019, and, and coming into the winter of 2019, but the, the peak of the flu season is January and February. So you would expect flu deaths in January. But look, there's the, there's the influenza column and there's nothing in it. Yeah. Where have they all gone? This is very, very strange. Perhaps we could bring uh, Alex in here for a bit of comment on that. Alex, is it us or is this uh, uh, deceit by the government becoming a little bit too obvious? Well, it's interesting, Brian, that Lord Sumption, the retired uh, Supreme Court Justice, has said that even the French and German governments were more honest with their people about the ramifications of SARS-CoV-2 than the British government has been. And that's saying something. Uh, I think it's also 
uh, worth noting that we're not the only people pointing to the apparent dwindling of influenza deaths this year. Our appearance, that's David Scott and me with John Cullen, was one of the first to point this out. But the Daily Mail has caught up with the UK column, not for the first time. Uh, foreign observers, I think, are starting to notice that there's something particularly massaged about Britain and America's presentation of statistics. Um, OK, well, look, let's uh, let's go on with this, uh, because that's the from the Office for National T Statistics. Now, we've got to remember uh, that uh, a few weeks ago, Public Health England pushed this out, weekly coronavirus disease 2019 surveillance report. They were pushing these out. This one was for week 40. Um, and uh, the text in this uh, says this, this will be the last COVID-19 surveillance report as of the 8th of October 2020. The information in this report will be published as a combined weekly flu and COVID-19 surveillance report on gov.uk. Right. So now it, they have to combine the two reports because apparently flu has disappeared completely. Well, and it's not just in the UK because look, here is the World Health Organization. And this is uh, their influenza laboratory surveillance information by the Global Influenza, influenza Surveillance and Response System. And I want to thank the uh, UK column viewer that sent us this through or that gave me the link to this. Uh, these are the global circulation of influenza viruses. And influenza seems to have disappeared globally, including countries that are in the southern hemisphere and are in the winter, uh, went through the winter uh, in mid-year uh, from week 16. Uh, no influenza left on the planet, Brian. This, this has got to be a success. <laughs> well, it's remarkable. This this is uh, this is magic. This is a mind spell here because, of course, this can't possibly be true. But what it's suggesting to me is that the only um, the only viruses that are going to be allowed to appear are the ones that are clearly controlled by the government controlled in the evidence, in the information they put out and controlled in what effect it has on the population by lockdown or no lockdown. So influenza is gone. Uh, COVID-19 is the only thing that exists anymore. And of course, the the, the, the measurement of, of figures on this cases, no positive test doesn't make a case. If we get to the antibodies uh, uh, segment at the end of the programme, uh, we'll explain why that's the case. So there we go. That was the end of the video. It was actually taken from the UK column episode on Friday. So very, very interesting. Have a good day and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.